Welcome everyone to today's Better Way Thursday workshop. We're so glad you're here. We are super excited about the topic we're discussing today, but before we get to that, I wanna talk about a few upcoming workshops we have coming up the rest of this fall semester 2022. Next week, we are talking about writing an elevator pitch which comes just in time for the Silicon Slopes Tech Summit, which is the best networking of the year here in Utah and even around the Intermountain West. And um, also for our in-person meetup that we're gonna have in October. So look forward to that. Um, we also have a workshop coming up on pro professional communication, which is gonna be amazing. We have two panels, one on um, understanding and um, working with working within a system of ageism within technology, which is a hot topic and something that'll be really fun to talk about. Well, not fun, horrible, but hopefully useful and um, uh, important for us. And we also have a panel on learning to network by joining professional organizations and groups. So we've got a lot of cool things coming up over the next month or two, but now I'm super excited to turn our um, presentation over to Ellen. Now I'm super embarrassed because I literally don't know how to pronounce your last name. It's Toomey. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So we have Ellen Toomey, who is the founder and CEO of You Are Techie, and she's going to tell you about that, but she has a podcast, she has coaching, she has a tons of great content and training courses and things like that. Her mission is very similar to ours, which is helping women understand that there is a fantastic place for them within the tech world, and she is helping them navigate how to get there. So the, the topic of our conversation today is mm -hmm. why tech needs moms and why moms need tech. And I'm super excited about this. Ellen, I'm just gonna turn the time over to you. Thanks, Robin. I'm excited to be here. I'm such a big fan of Tech Moms. Robin and Michaela have been great supporters of your Techie. We're like sister organizations on the opposite coast. I, I, I live in Atlanta now, but I was living in North Carolina for the last eight years. So really excited to talk to you about my favorite topic, bringing more moms to tech. And yeah, as Robin was saying, I have a podcast. So I'll talk a little bit about that. You can hear more about it. Um, on, uh, uh, you can hear more tech information on my podcast. I think we're going to, we're going to launch this one as a podcast too. So let's dive in and I'll talk more about myself in the, in the presentation. And I will do my best to answer your questions, but it might, I might take me a minute as I go in and I will for sure answer them at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of a free for all. You can, you can consider yes. it an AMA. I'll ask you, I'll answer anything you want. So yes. um, today we're talking about why tech needs moms and then also why moms need tech. And it, it's a, it's a really, um, you know, it's foundational to, to our mission and what we believe. And I think it's a funny concept that most moms don't really consider. They're like, wait, tech needs me. But we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and dive into what that is because we're gonna learn the beautiful fit that tech and moms had that it really defies the thinking that you've been raised with. And I'm here to show you how to make the ultimate shift in your brain and in your life to just stop spinning and get hired. And so it's just gonna be, I think, a really impactful um, training for you today. And and hopefully it it speaks directly to you and what you're experiencing. So we're gonna talk about why tech needs moms and why moms need tech today. Moms, tech needs you more than you realize. And one of the funny things that happens with my students, I have a, I have a membership and my students want to um, make their mark in the world. They wanna do something meaningful and be helpful to people who are um, contributing. They wanna to contribute to the world in a way that where they feel like their skills are actually needed. And that's why I, I think this is an important concept and one that we need to understand that tech actually does need you. And when I say that, those of you here live, I know you're a little bit further down the path. You're, you're pretty convinced that tech's gonna be a good a fit for you and, and you've made that decision. But essentially, I want you to understand that it's not just good for you. It's not just something like, well, I want this in my life and I'm trying to achieve this goal. And hey, you know what? It's good for, for me and my family. And it's and it's um, really self-centered. There's also an altruism here that tech needs the skills and values that you bring. There's an important aspect to it that is lacking that there's really no way for you to understand if you're not in it. You can't really understand how tech can need you um, when you're not even a part of it yet. And like I said, those live are probably a little bit further. So 
the way that I that I like to phrase this, and we'll we'll talk about all the elements of it, but I really want to help show you how to make the ultimate shift. And it's from struggling to believe in yourself to streamlining your decision process and your learning so that you can find the tech job of your dreams. So that's what we want to do is, is that not believing in yourself is we're just going to put that behind us. We're just going to move forward and we're going to make decisions. And I want you to just get on this train with me that the tech job of your dreams is possible. It's out there. I see women achieve this every day. And that's where we want to go today. So quickly, I, I know that oftentimes we want to get to know like who's the person talking to us. So I'll pretend that you guys have never heard of me. You don't know my family or who I am. I love, I love that I'm talking to Utah. I know I've got my Mormon friends there. I'm a Catholic mom, so I'm in good company when I say I have five children. But most of the people I tell, they're like, oh my gosh, how many? So I have five children. I had four older ones, as you can see. And then that's little baby Gwen on the upper left, but now down on the right is her just a few weeks ago. And that's that crazy man who's on this journey with me, Kevin. Um, we've been married for 21 years together for 25. And we've I'll just name the states we've lived in because it's entertaining for our family and for people to make fun of us. We're not running from the law. We're not military. We just, we just are willing to make big changes in our life if we think um, it's going to level us up. So we have lived in, and am I still okay? Okay. Rob and I freezing at all? Yeah, you're still good. Okay. So we have, we both grew up in, in Detroit, in Detroit, Michigan, and then we lived in Connecticut and DC and then Chicago. So we had one child in DC and then three more in Chicago and then North Carolina. And I was just telling Robin, we just moved to Atlanta um, this summer, like two months ago. And I never thought we would move, but because I thought we were very happy in North Carolina and we were, but when we had little Gwenny, we had to make changes. And that's what happens in your life. Like you, you, you think things are working well, and then you experience some amount of pain and you're like, what's going on? I need to figure this out. And so that is my family. That is who I am personally, pretty much. That takes up pretty much all my time. And so um, I think that my professional background, it might be more interesting to you. I don't know, sometimes the five kids is, but I think it's more helpful to you. So I started my career, um, I actually have an undergrad in computer science. And I say actually, because most people in technology do not have that degree. I work with so many people that come from non-traditional backgrounds that when I meet someone who has a CS degree, I'm like, oh, I'm one of you too. Uh, but that was actually, it wasn't like I was coding since I was eight. That was, I stumbled into that as well. And then I started my career at Accenture, which is a large global consulting firm. And I felt pretty unfulfilled um, with, with the, the, the type of work that I was doing in terms of the people that I was working with. And so I, I sought out and moved into teaching. So I was a teacher and a technology director across elite private high schools, across about half the states that I just named for you. I thought that if I was more altruistic and I was teaching, that would feel better. But that's pretty much been the dance I've played is, uh, is basically uh, in my master's degree from Purdue is in learning, design, and technology. It's pretty much been the dance I've played my whole life, learning, design, and technology. So then I actually stayed home with my kids. I was very bad at staying home. And by that, I mean, I was always picking up a tech project here or, or remodeling a house or something. But I really, you know, one, I took that time to stay home with my kids. But I think it's an important aspect because a lot of times women that I work with who are breaking into tech, they're breaking in from staying at home. And, and so not only do they have to break into a workforce, not only are they trying to get hired, they're trying to get hired in this highly competitive and highly skilled field of technology. And I just want you to know, I feel you. And so uh, I then when I returned, I did not. So when I worked at Accenture, I was a developer and I returned as a UX designer because, again, I just was in, in interested in the whole product. And I streamlined freelance my freelance work into a, a UX consultancy where I was really focused on product and, and UX um, strategy. So then uh, I'm now the business owner, CEO, founder of UR Techie. And that's we help women and moms, specifically moms, gain the skills and confidence to get hired in technology. That's the important piece is that when I tried to return to the workforce, I had the skills and I spun and spun through lack of confidence, which is crazy. I was a class president. I played football. I was a super confident person. You can hear me. I'm a confident person today. But what I lacked was I had a ton of confidence in my mothering skills, was really dedicated to my family. I lacked confidence in the workplace value that I could bring. And so what I realized, tech is so big, it's so massive. How do we actually get hired in this? We need to have, a, we need to learn skills, but have enough confidence to say, I know enough skills to add value to an organization. And that's foundational to what we do. So, and it's, I'm sure it's foundational to your journey.
So just a little bit more. That's my background. But I, if you can't hear from my voice, I actually love this. I get so pumped to work with moms like you. I, I was I was recording a podcast earlier today, and it was one with a former student of mine who's now a mentor in our program. And we were just talking about how we still sit in rooms where we're the only women. And so if I can say one thing to you, we would like you to join us. We'd like you to come to us. It's still a problem. And it's unbelievable to me that over 20 years ago, I was, uh, and you talked about ageism. So I'm 43. I announce my age all the time. I'm super young. If you're 57, you are also super young. I really believe in saying our age, not apologizing for it. So over 20 years ago, um, I was in rooms and I was the only woman and that's still happening today. So I, this message is so important. If you feel like you don't belong, I just want to say you are welcome in our rooms. We want you there. So I have an insider's view of what you can contribute to technology, both with my own experience, um, with my extensive network who just gets behind this mission and is so helpful, men and women alike. And I can show you the secrets to get hired for the right job for the right salary. So I focus on two fundamental skills. So the first piece, if you're taking notes, I recommend notes, design and development. Don't overcomplicate it. There are a million jobs in technology. There are a million different things you can do. If you learn the skills of design and or development, you should learn one of those. You can learn the other one. You have a fundamental skill that is highly valued in the marketplace and you don't need to learn 10,000 other skills. You can do lots of jobs with that. You can be a designer, you can be a developer, and there are also many other jobs that you can do with those fundamental skills. So that is a very key point. So let's, this is really all about you, right? So I told you about my story. One of the things, if you think I'm someone who likes putting my picture out there and likes being on camera, you have no idea. I absolutely hated pictures. And so when I started my company and I had this good friend who was in marketing, he's like, so what you need to do is get these big pictures of yourself and then slam your picture all over your website. I was like, what are you talking about? I'm not going to do that. And so Robin commented on my picture at the beginning, my, my, my good friend, Jen Z, love her. Thank you, Jen. She's an amazing photographer, even though she does, does it on the side. She took those pictures of me. One of the reasons I got my head around putting my myself out there is because I want tech to look like me. I want tech to look like me. I want it to look like you. I want it to look like all these different people out there. And so this, my journey is for you. I give you my journey. And so the struggles that I have, I don't want you to have those struggles. What I want you to do is understand that whether you think tech looks like you or not, whether you think it focuses on who you are, it is. And so I want, I want to take you on this journey because ultimately I share my story for your story. And so can you imagine what it would be like for you to contribute meaningfully to the world? Yes, to the world. And that's not a dramatic statement, but also your family's bank account, doing work you love with people you love. My friends, I see women doing this every day. I see moms making this transition every day. This is a reality for you. This is happening, even if it feels impossible, even if it feels like you can't see it or you're afraid that it's not gonna be everything you expected. This is a possible future reality for you. So this is actually my hidden mission of your time. I want every woman in the whole wide world to feel like this question is relevant to them. Is a tech career right for me? Every single woman, yes, every single woman, to consider it, to consider it. Now, some people will decide on something else. Listen, my oldest, she's 15. I'm pretty sure she's gonna be a lawyer. It hurts a little, it hurts a little, but she's gotta find what is right for her. I know that she, if she, should she not pursue technology, it is not because of fear of her skills or her abilities or anything that she thinks about is because she has a different passion, but she knows that there is a tech career that she could have, and she is raised with that. And so I want you to spread this message. The reason I named the company, you are techie and not I am techie, even though you should say that is because I don't just want you to hear this message. I mean, especially in this environment, many of you have already come to this conclusion. I want you to understand that other women need your help. 
and you can be a mentor to someone who has not yet asked this question, is a tech career right for me? And I think a tech career can be right for really anyone. If that's what they want to pursue, there really is that you don't have to be good in math. Please don't say that to me. It really hurts my heart. It's just not a true thing. It's not a factor. There's no prerequisite. And it's okay if you don't play video games. That's not a thing. I don't play video games. But really and truly, I think that there are lots of women who just say no, and especially moms. I can tell you when I stayed home with my kids, and one of the thing, ways that I spun is I learned another programming language, and some of you might find this annoying, like I already knew three, but I learned a fourth because that's what I absolutely needed to do to get hired, which was a waste, but that's okay. I learned other skills. And so I put my kids down for a nap, and then I go sit on my couch, and I would like be, be writing code. And I, I literally had the thoughts, like, there's no woman in the world who's doing this. I'm the only, I'm, I'm the only woman. I felt very alone and, and separate. And what I realized is I was wrong, but we, in order to understand that we have to reach out to people and let them know. So I encourage you ask this question as a tech career right for me, and then pass that on to your friends. If you've already made that determination that it's true for you, who can you pass that on to? Maybe a tech career is possible for you. And your friend, you may be the one voice, I have this whole coaching I do on voices I'm listening to. You may be the only voice that friend is hearing. Every other voice might be like, nope, you couldn't do that. Could be, it could be people who love your friend, it could be well-meaning friends, family, spouses. Although I will say a lot of husbands are the ones pushing their wives into it. They're like, you can definitely do this. So I don't want to, I don't want to rag on, on spouses too much. They definitely tend to be supportive. But my point is that you may be the one voice, just you knowing that, that tech careers are possible puts you in a mentor state. And you might say, well, no, no, I need a mentor. Well, I like to say you need a mentor and you have a mentor because you've already crossed that line into understanding is tech possible for me? Is a tech career right for me? You're on the other side of that, most of you. And that's what I want you to share with people. Okay, so let's dive into a little bit. So why tech? Well, you know, a lot, this is at a high level. Mom like tech because it's it's meaningful work. And I don't know if everybody knows that. I, I have used the word meaningful for years, but today I just want to tell you, I mean, it is fun. Okay, people, this is fun stuff. I love it. I, I, I say I geek out over it, but it really is fun, interesting work. And it's meaningful to, to the world. Like think about it, the, 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 in the palm of our hands, we're giving our children technology. Don't you want to be someone who's impacting that? And then of course, tech is highly flexible. We, I can talk all day about that. I'll talk a little bit more about it, but it really is the leader. Technology is the leader in, in workplace flexibility. It always has been. And so when you ask for flexibility in a tech role, it's, it's a very, you almost don't have to ask, right? Like we just want to pick our kids up from school. That's a big one of moms, right? We, and, and so not every job is the same. Not every job is identical, but the point is that you're going to have a flexibility at a level that where you feel like you're coming from the same um, mind space. And, and that wasn't true when I started, for sure. It was, it was not always like that, but tech has been the leader in it. And I don't know if you guys have heard, but tech pays well. And I'm not sure you've heard that. Maybe you have, I think. I love to talk about money, by the way. I love it. So I'm actually starting backwards, right? Moms need tech. Actually, isn't the title of this tech needs moms? Yes, I'm gonna finish with that. So I'm coming with a fi strong finish. I like to mix things up. So moms need tech. Listen, if you want to do good in the world, I, that's a correct use of the English language, by the way. You want to do good. You want to put good out into the world. You want to be a person who is contributing uh, meaningfully. Technology is at scale. It reaches people across countries, worlds, barriers, ages, ethnicities, cultures, it reaches everyone. If you can touch that many people, think of the good that you can do in the world. Um, and then I, that is like a whole other, the, like the good you can do in the world. And by the way, not just with altruistic software, with any software, any software that you work on can create less frustration for people. You can bring an empathetic, tone to to the software at, at, a, at a level that is very hard for 
you to understand right now, but you are bringing experiences in your perspective that is not being heard in a lot of rooms. And in order for that, for, for software to be designed for you, you have to have a voice in it. And, and there's so many other ways, that's a whole rabbit hole. But anyway, that's you <laughs> doing good in the world. That's why moms need tech because you can help people at scale with tech. Okay, we want to be a good example of what's possible for our girls. Like, hello, my kids, and I know your kids, um, they know that this is a career for them. They're going to grow up having tech, a tech mom. Well, my mom was in tech. No anyone growing up who said my mom was in tech. And I can't, and, and it, this is an important message. You just, guess what? You can just do the work and be an example. That's amazing. That's an amazing um, uh, amazing aspect to, to think about. And, and I, I'm sure it's a driver for a lot of people. Okay. Here's, and now I'm gonna go back to my stay at home story, but we're intelligent, capable people who wanna contribute meaningfully to our family's bank account. Listen, I, I love my kids. I have no doubt you love your kids. I'm super dedicated to them. They, they're my world. And yet I needed stimulation. I needed mental stimulation. I had an intelligence to contribute to the world. Not that you can't as a stay-at-home mom, but I found it difficult. And so the capable, intelligent side of us is absolutely available and needing to come out. And we should not apologize for that. And I'm going to, if in case you haven't heard, I like to talk about money you deserve to contribute meaningfully to your family's bank account. And this is one of my, I'm going to just tell you in my Facebook ads, because I love it so much. I talk about it all the time. And, and I think actually my husband told me to, to put this or I don't know, some marketing people, but essentially a lot of women and moms, they come in, they're like, they think their skills are worth $25 an hour. And I'm here to tell you, your skills are worth $45 an hour. No matter if you start there or if you are headed in that direction, but tech can offer you a six figure income. And I like to say some people start there, some people don't start there, but get there very quickly. And I promise you, you're gonna get there a lot faster at, with tech, a tech job than you are with other places. And I know, that, I know that where you enter the market is important, your salary is important, it matters. But from a trajectory standpoint, it's not that important. Breaking in is the key. Your I like to say your salary will skyrocket. And it sounds a little bit dramatic, but there are numbers behind that. I actually love math, even though you don't need to love math to be in the tech. And, and the most software is, is run on this SaaS model of like, I'm going to talk a little about revenue, but like recurring monthly revenue. Well, what that means is that with the same amount of effort, you can generate more and more revenue because you're serving more and more people. What does that mean for you? It means that your salary is a component of that. So your company can grow. They can have more customers. That is a likely, that is the way that technology is designed to work. And so your salary is designed to go up. Okay, that was just a little bit. So why don't we? I mean, I'm making it sound like this is a very easy choice here. Why don't we? Well, let's talk about the hard side of this, okay? And I am a very competitive person. You heard I play football. I play a lot of other sports too. But persistence and patience. Sometimes as moms, we lack persistence and patience for ourselves. We tend not to lack it for our children. We'll give everyone as much time and patience, but for ourselves, we have to do it immediately. We have to do it now. We don't have time to invest in ourselves, not, not to invest money, not to invest time. It's too busy. There's not enough going on. No. We don't because we are not persistent and patient enough with ourselves. And instead, we tend to doubt ourselves and berate ourselves. And that's why I was talking about competition. Listen, none of you, I'm going to beat all of you at this. Nobody can beat themselves up like I can mentally. And I mean, it is, I am the winner here. Um, and I, what I decided was that did not serve me in my life. I didn't like it. I didn't like beating myself up for every mistake that I made. And, and here's where it ties into tech. You, in technology, you're being paid to think and you're being paid to think to solve problems. And those problems necessarily mean hitting roadblocks. It's not like, oh my gosh, I don't know the answer. I couldn't figure it out. No, you've hit a roadblock. That's what happens. And so understanding that you have to be gentle and patient with yourself as you hit roadblocks and as your team hits roadblocks and constantly going back to how do we solve this? How do we solve this? 
is so important for success as a technologist. It's maybe even more important as we're learning, as we're breaking into the field, because we think that when we break in, all of this will go away and it will not. We need to develop the habit of being patient and persistent with ourselves. And the reason I say persistent, I think we're as moms, like, I mean, come on, we can nag till the cows come home. We'll be really persistent with our kids. I mean, I know my kids think I'm very good at that, but we, we need to be persistent with our goals. And, and so a lot of times students will come to me and they, maybe they've been to a boot camp before. Maybe they've tried other things and it didn't work. Guess what? That's okay. And you say, well, that person got hired so fast or it was so easy for them. Well, I know that we, we know the old mantra, comparison is a thief of joy, but I really like to be more dramatic with my language and say like, when you are thinking about other people, you're thinking about your journey in terms of other people, you are harming yourself. You are doing yourself a disservice. You have your own journey. You don't understand what other people, the, what other people, um, the skills that I, they acquired in different places. Maybe there are advantages that they had. You, you can't just take your journey. I know a lot, a lot of times I've kind of washed this language out with my, some of my marketing, but students have come to me like, but how long is it going to take me? Well, I can't exactly tell you how long it's up to give you some averages, but here's why you should look at averages. Listen, just be patient with yourself. Just be patient with yourself when you're, when you're solving, when there's an error in your code and be patient with yourself when it's taken longer than you, than you think. And so <clears throat> what that really means is that we're afraid. And I, I am not afraid to talk about fear. Everybody operates in fear. Men operate in fear. People operate in fear in the tech industry. People operate in fear and learning. I'm not afraid to talk about it, but our fear factors impact what we do. And so when we doubt ourselves, it's important to look at that fear and say, you know what, this is just a fear factor that I'm looking at. I don't feel like I belong. I don't know how to do this. I, all of these are solvable problems. All of these are able to be figured out. And so why we're afraid is because we're worried that if we believe in ourselves and we let people down, that will be the greatest disappointment. So if you can stamp out fear, the way to stamp it out is really to say, I'm gonna decide to believe in myself and I'm gonna decide to believe in myself a little bit more each day. Because the alternative is not serving you and it's not helping you. So you might as well believe in yourself a little bit more today than you did yesterday. And the other reason that fear factors come up is that we fail to stay focused. And I don't know if I love this picture because she's a busy mom, there are bad things going on. It's not that we're not focused as people. It's not that we're not focused on things that matter, but sometimes we fail to stay focused on our dreams and our goals. Okay, folks, I talk about this a lot. I, I've been, I was pretty excited about this slide. This, friend, welcome to the tech learning rabbit hole. Now, this is, this is something I talk about a lot in the podcast. I've addressed a lot. When I say it, people are like, oh yeah, I get it. The tech learning rabbit hole. And that's what I was in when I learned that other programming language that was completely unnecessary for what I wanted to do and what I returned to workforce for. It's like, oh, you return, you, you, the tech learning rabbit hole. So that's one, you add a skill, you can add a skill. The tech learning rabbit hole can also be, um, I need to be even better at this. So for example, I teach UX design. Okay, I need to know every feature and function of Figma. Once I know that, then I'm allowed to be hired. Um, incorrect, incorrect. Uh, another tech learning rabbit hole, YouTube, 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 YouTube. But now the spiraling down of different YouTubes. Another tech learning rabbit hole, listening to a bunch of different experts. So that's how we can lose focus is we get sucked into this rabbit hole, which by the way, you have to, constantly remind yourself where you are, what you should do and how to move forward. What is the one next right step and know your goal. You have to know your goal. And so if your goal is to get hired, you have to actively weed out the tech learning rabbit hole or it is coming for you. Oh, another one, another $10 course, another $10 course. There's just, it takes a lot of forms. And so if you're not actively weeding it out, then you're not gonna know your goal. You're not gonna stay focused on your goal. So if your goal is to break into tech, which is 
what most of you are doing to create meaningful work in your life and to get paid a salary worth your value. That is your goal. And you're not selfish. You're not greedy. That is where you want to stay. And so what I want you to say, okay, that's nice. That sounds nice. But here's where it's the rubber beats the road. When you're in, and this is how you get out of the tech learning rabbit hole. When, you, when you're looking at what you are learning, you need to be harsh, a harsh line with yourself and say, is this helping me get hired? Yes or no. Can I learn this after I get hired? Table it table it, right? So I talk a lot about getting hired faster and for more money, which sounds like a big marketing buzz, but really what it is, is that I don't want you to waste time in that tech learning rabbit hole. And it's just calling for you. Look at that cute little bunny. It wants you. No, you need to learn the skills. And once you have those skills, you don't want to overlearn them. Your goal is to get hired, not to learn everything in tech. If that was your goal, I don't think you're going to succeed. And this is where I say, you know your goal. And then you do the one next right thing. Boom, that's it. You know your goal, you do the one next right thing. That's it. So that is really ultimately what needs to happen in your life and in, 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 in your in your date, in your mind, in your brain, when your brain's like, well, all, all the things. What if I don't get hired? What if they don't like me? I think I'm too old. Ellen, am I too old? No, you're not too old. If my mother, she's 74, she's visiting this week, God bless her. If she came to me and she's like, am I too old to get hired in tech? I actually think she'd ask me this. And I'm like, nope, you are not too old. You can do this. So I don't care. All of those things are preventing you from doing the one next right thing to getting your goal. And that's where your brain should spend the majority of your time. And by focusing, oh, by the way, by focusing your brain on the one next right thing, you're actually practicing being in tech because in tech, it's the same thing. What is the question in front of me? The reason we spin and freak out and get nervous is because we're like, oh my gosh, I can't answer this question. Oh, well, what's the question? Can we break it down? Can we ask someone for help? Can we be clearer about it? Can we step away and come back? Like, it's just a question. This is the challenge. And so practicing that ability to focus on the one next right thing is really, really helpful. So the next step, and this is not easy, is the one next right thing in, in setting your goals and staying focused involves asking questions. My friends, it, it involves asking better and better questions. This is a practice that I encourage you to take in your life. It is absolutely, it's a true for everyone. It's true all across the board. I love the implications in tech because as you ask better and better questions, you become a better technologist. You can, and that's, and if you're like, well, Ellen, who do I ask them to? The first person you ask them to is yourself. You absolutely ask these questions to yourself. So let me give you an example of a bad question. A bad question is, am I ever gonna get hired in tech? How long is this gonna take me? Uh, can I really do this? Those are not serving you questions. A, I say, throw them out with the bath water. That's not, how, that's not how that phrase goes, but that's okay. What I say is ask better and better questions. What can I do today? What are the two most important things I can do today to move forward on getting hired? What are the two most important things? And by the way, they both shouldn't be sitting down and writing more code. They're both not that, right? I know Robin and I are on the same page. We talk about you need to have a community around you. You need to be willing to talk to people. And I mean, let me just, let me just ask this. Who have you asked to hire you this week? That's the question I have for you. And you say, no, Ellen, I'm not there. Well, when are you going to be there? How about next week? This is a thing. You're going to always feel like you're not ready. And you say, well, I don't have the skills yet. Okay, well, when do you have the skills? So we'd like to, we need to have better and better questions. Who can I ask today to hire me? And there are lots of ways that you can do that. Like, I'm ready for work. Do you know anyone? Do you have anything at, at your company? And so often we're afraid to ask that question. And what I like to say is, how mean are you? This is why I say to my students right there. How mean are you that you are refusing to give someone your skills in exchange for high value? Why are you preventing? There's a there's an enormous need in the tech industry. Why are you preventing it? So, okay, I know I'm, I'm going on and on because I just love it. So tech is great for us. Tech is absolutely great for us. Yet we can still feel like we don't belong. We can still feel like we don't belong. But tech needs moms. I already told you that. That's an important piece. Well, Ellen, why does tech need moms? Really? Does really? Really? Yes. Okay, so the first reason, high level, it wasn't designed for me. This is what, when I started my, before I started my company, I would have women tell me that they couldn't work a remote. And so they obviously weren't good at technology. And I said, no, my, I think it was nine, 13 now. But I, I think my nine-year-old, and like my nine-year-old works a remote better than me because number one, it was designed for him. And number two, he uses it more. I don't really watch TV. So if you, 
if you're from that mindset, it's really, you're going to, it's a perpetuating cycle. Think about that. Then what about our girls? Well, then our daughters, they're not going to feel like it was designed for them because they, women didn't have the perspective on it. Moms didn't have the perspective. Personally, I want to be involved in as many technologies as I can, because I know that my, my children, my grandchildren, that's going to impact them. And I want them to feel like it was designed for them. And tech needs moms, in case you didn't hear, technology has an enormous shortfall. There's a ton of technology jobs every, I mean, it's really hard to have a job in today's world without some type of technology, but there's this enormous shortfall. And here's the thing, it's only growing bigger. And finally, you actually have the skills and I'm gonna just go dive into it. And you're like, no, 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 Alan, I don't have those skills yet. Yes, you do. You're wrong. I'm gonna tell you how. Okay, so we are their customers. So when we say, that it wasn't designed by me, tech needs us. So it is designed by us. We're the ones who purchase it. We, we make more than 50% of the purchases. So when products are designed, and this is hard or soft, right? The remote or software, and they don't work the way that we feel it should, we should change that. I have, so Kevin, my husband, Kevin drives an Escalade and I drive a minivan. And I'm getting rid of the minivan this year when Reagan turns 16, but I, and I'm excited about that. I'm not a minivan lover, but I will tell you, when I give them that minivan, man, the butt gosh darn it, if they aren't where I think they should be. And when I get in the Escalade, gosh darn it, is it so confusing? And did you remember the part about me having a computer science degree? Okay, I just don't think they're, and, and I love GM and I think the Escalade is a great car, by the way, but I don't think the buttons work the way that I think they should. And so Cadillac should put some more women on our team. And we design, we design. We should not think it wasn't designed for me. We should think, how would I design it? How, how could it be used for me? We are the customers. And when something doesn't work the way we think, we are not broken. The technology is broken. Told you, Robin, I was going, told you I get excited about this stuff. So the tech shortfall. Um, demand for tech talent remains strong. I, honestly, ladies, there are so many different competing uh, or not competing, but different. What are the numbers? Who, I'm going to give you a few numbers. It's just all I know is there are a lot of gosh darn jobs. And the one thing I want you to take away, don't get lost in the numbers. You are one person and you need one job. That you are one person, you need one job. So I'm going to prove to you that there are lots of jobs available. But when you think, I don't like it when people enter in, they're, they're like, oh, there are no jobs. They applied for a hundred jobs. With the right strategies and the right persistence, you're going to get hired. There's a ton of, there's a ton, but I'm going to go over the shortfall as long as you remember that you're one person, you need one job. So U.S. employers posting 1.1 million tech jobs opening in the first quarter of this year. It's an increase of 43% from the year earlier. Now, um, I'm going to show you this study. I actually think it's a little bit extreme, but they're saying $8.5 trillion talent shortage. This is from Corn Ferry, that by 2030, they're going to have 8.5 8.5 million jobs could go 85 million could go unfilled because there aren't enough skilled people now but they're saying that there's an 8.5 trillion that's going to happen now let's say they're just and i think this is a little inflated let's say it's inflated let's say it's 10 percent it's 850 million jobs that are going to be created in the next 30 years or in the next 10 years so it's only growing that's the whole point it's only growing and getting more in demand so why not learn your skills now say it takes you a year and I don't think it, I don't think it needs to, but let's say it took you a year. So what still in, in a year, there's only more jobs and more opportunity. And, and you're going to be doing this career for the next 10, 20, 30 years. All right. So here's where I said that you have the skills. Listen, I truly and firmly believe in case you didn't catch this, that you can learn whatever tech skills you need to learn. You absolutely can learn these. You are capable of doing this. I don't care what your background is. I've worked with social workers, nutritionists, occupational therapists, like really like a lot of teachers because I was a teacher, like really any job, I don't care, stay at home mom, it doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter. You can learn the technology, you can learn the technical skills. Here are the skills as a mom you are practicing every day that technology needs that you may not even be thinking. Deep thinking, you think about what's best for your kids, you think about their, their growth, what are you creating the right environment for them? Do they go to the right school? Deep thinking, project management, oh my gosh, I don't even need to say anything about that, everybody knows. Problem solving, you're constantly problem solving, you know, and I know sometimes it doesn't feel like, hey, where is the other black sock that you're going to wear? I don't know how they match and the laundry, but you're problem solving, right? That's like, is it in this hamper or that hamper? Maybe you guys do your laundry a lot better than me, but that's okay. 
empathy that I is incorrectly spelled. So we're gonna have to fix that. Empathy, you when you are thinking about other people, I just want to say you cannot imagine, yes, in user experience design, yes, in develop development when we're writing code that someone else can use, yes, when we're designing a software that someone else is going to use, absolutely. But also um, when you're thinking about the people you're working with and you're empathetic towards them and you think about the way that you can benefit them, that is, you are doing that every day because you're thinking about your kids every day. I know you are. Uh, maturity, that's not a euphemism for old age. You're a mature person. You've gone through things. That means when the going gets tough, you're not gonna wig out. That means you're gonna be there and you're gonna be able to stay in that space. Do not take that for granted. Okay, getting it done, baby, that project management. Hey, that homework's gotta be done. You gotta have that project in. You gotta have that, pro, you know, that poster board. That getting those things done constantly, and those are just small examples. I know we all, all do, you know, much more mindfully uh, challenging things in our in our home life. But those are just some examples. On time, you get your kids to school on time. Do you know how much of tech is not on time? Focusing on getting things done on time really important. And then supportive. I know already know you're a supportive person. That is so needed in tech. We need to support each other. The the agile environment that most tech teams work through is is a it's a raw type of experience where you're like, here's what I'm working on today. And did I get it done? And if I didn't get it done, you're talking to people about it. And it's a very um, exposing type of uh, experience. And you need people who are supportive and, and not, it needs to be an iterative process where we're always getting better. And we understand that perfection is not an achievable goal. So what do we really need in technology? What do we really need? It's really easy. We need you. That's it. We need you. We need you in technology. We need you to tell people that we need more people in technology. That is what we need. In case you're wondering, it looks like you. And I'm going to just close out and say, in case you didn't hear it, you absolutely are techie. You're techie the moment you make that decision and make progress towards your techie goal. It is important for you to believe in yourself and to believe this is possible. Thank you so much for having me here today. Be happy to take questions. And yes, we're on the, yeah, go ahead, Robin. Alan, that is amazing. I love your passion. Of course, <laughs> uh, it's so fun. And and uh, I told a lot of our women, we have a bunch of women that just started this week um, and last week. Great, and, great. And, you know, we've got, I mean, we've got a lot of women in our community who you said, you know, you're already on board, but we've got a lot of women who, who aren't necessarily on board yet. Like they're like trying them out. I'm not sure if I really belong here, things like that. So uh, <laughs> I, I told everybody, I'm like, this video, you've got to check it out. If anybody can make you believe that this is a place for you and that you can do this, it is Ellen. So I'm, I'm so thrilled about that. I took a ton of notes um, and some some really big takeaways. I Please, if you've got any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. And I was so busy. Normally, I always have lots of questions. But I was so busy like taking these inspirational notes for myself that I wasn't writing down <laughs> questions. But one of my favorite things that you said was that tech is about problem solving, which means that there's going to be problems. Like, I love that. I love that idea when you said that um, it's about patience and persistence, because we don't think about that. Like, like we do talk all the time, being a software developer is about problem solving. And then people are like, why doesn't my code work? Right? Well, because it's about problem solving. That means you're necessarily going to have problems. Otherwise, yeah. it wouldn't be a job. There wouldn't be a thing to do if you weren't solving problems. So right. I love that. I love that switch of mindset instead of saying, right. I expect this to work right every time to say the whole reason why you're here is to solve the problem in front of you. So I love right. that. Right. And it's, I love that too. I love how you comment on that because the you're being paid to think and to solve that problem. You're not being paid because you have some working code in front of you. Big deal. If you have some working code, anyone can pull out some working code. Mm -hmm. Can you solve that problem? And Robin, I just wanted to tell people, we talked about the podcast earlier. So my website is youartechie.com and they can slash podcast. They can get a number of the podcasts on there and we are on all the players. And the reason I say that is not to promote your techie or, or anything like that, but a lot of, a lot of women, you know, they'll hear this and they'll want further support. And, and the podcast is something that came because I wanted to educate more people on how this process works and how they can break in and how it's possible. So I've, we have like over 150 episodes now. So please, it's all free. Just dive in, 
take a, take a look. It's all for you. And one of the things that's being most, they're always my most popular are my success stories. So you, I can come here and you can hear me and you can be inspired, but listen, women are really doing this. I think my students are the inspiring ones and they're the ones. So check out a success story. That's what I'd say. I love, um, love hearing the success stories too. So uh, when we were going back and forth on LinkedIn yesterday, uh, one of my one of my tech moms said that you really helped her get out of that tech learning rabbit hole. And uh, <laughs> and I see this. I I've got tech moms. I I've got one of my tech moms who's from our original program, and I keep telling her, you need to stop going to school. You need to quit taking courses. She's like, well, I did this one boot camp, and then I'm going to do this next thing, and then I'm taking this course, and I have to finish this other thing. And I'm like you are ready to get hired. So how do you, I mean, you've told us that we need to do it. You've helped us recognize and name the problem, <laughs> but what is a step to say, how can we believe, okay, I can stop taking courses or I can keep taking courses, but in the meantime, I need to start asking people to hire me. I love the way you said that. How many people have you asked to hire you this week? So, um, mm -hmm. so how do you make that jump yes. and say, okay, I'm ready to dive in. Whether or not I'm ready, I'm going to dive in anyway. Yeah. I mean, Robin, this was, this is fantastic. And Melanie, thank you so much. Melanie says we've touched on so many things that are holding her back. Melanie, just know like you're not alone. It's just normal. It's what, you know, if it resonated with you, it's because I've heard it, you know, a hundred times before. This was a really important concept for me. It's like, okay, well, what do you need? And quite honestly, I'm not exactly sure if this drives with the way Tech Moms does it, but this is the way that I lay it out very clearly and very simply, because what you just described to me sounds very familiar. I've heard that one before. So I look at it like this, my students, you're involved in two activities. Those activities are building your portfolio and building your community. That's all you're doing. You're not doing, you're not writing code that's not going in your portfolio. You're not doing projects that's not going in your portfolio. You're not, you're not, you're only building your portfolio and then building your community. By building your community, yes, it's networking, but we talk about the way to do it authentically. I do not believe you have to be an extrovert. I believe you need to meet authentically with people so that you get to work with people you really love. I work with people I love. I think it's very important. I know you do too. That's an important piece to loving your work. And so you're going to connect with with people. So those are the two things you're going to do. And the way that I structure this is very simply. So in the beginning, it's 75% portfolio building and 25% community building. And then you move till the end where it's 75% community building and 25% portfolio, because there's always another tweak, but that's another rabbit hole, right? Just keep tweaking your portfolio. No, no, no. And so um, you can say, but Ellen, no, no, no. You, I, I just started. I can't do community building. I, no, you can. I'm sure of it. People do it. So I have loved this story and it's a, it's a really fun story. So one of my students, Gretchen, she went to a meetup and it was two weeks into our program and she got hired after two weeks and it was her very first meetup. So we talk a lot about meetups. I started as a meetup. Um, my free Facebook group is, came out of a meetup, but Robin, that's how I get hired, got hired too from staying at home. I went to one meetup. And then I was like, well, actually I'm actively looking for a job. They're like, Josh is hiring. And I walked across the meetup. I met five people and I got hired. So, I mean, I get it. That's not going to be everyone's story, but it is possible. So why not give it a try? You know, it's worked. And I want to tell you one more thing on this, on the, the portfolio building that you say, okay, Ellen, well, how many prod now we get the project, um, um, you know, rabbit hole. I say two projects. I say one self-selected that you pick yourself and one that you get a freelance, and I'm putting free in quotes, freelance project where you do the work for free for someone else in exchange for use in your portfolio. Did you hear the part about you have to use it in your portfolio? You don't do it unless you're using your portfolio. And you go through, we do design and development. So you go through that process. And after two projects, I just like basically yell at everyone and say, you're done. Stop doing another project. Don't take another project. Just get hired, get hired, get hired. And I don't ever yell because I think it's, I think that it's really hard, but I do get amped up because I, I had to come to that term like, okay, it's two, that's it. It's not three, it's not five. It's a, because if you don't have that number, if you don't have that something that is stopping you from moving forward, you're just gonna keep spinning out. I need to learn this, I need to do. And even with that, you know, people can spin, but that's when I think you're job ready when you've done. And, and that doesn't mean that you're necessarily gonna go make a hundred thousand at an incredible job after two projects, but it does mean that you can add value to a project. It does mean that you know enough to be dangerous. And let me tell you, as a developer, I know a lot of developers, they don't want to write, they want to update code. They don't want to be tweaking their CSS. They don't want to do that. So if you can just do that for them, they're very happy to pay you a lovely salary for that. I love it. And and I, I love how you're just kind of giving people permission 
to just say mm -hmm. like, you don't need to be spinning forever. You don't need to wait forever. And, and I think what you said that you will never feel ready is so true. And that's, and that's the same mm -hmm. thing. I, I tell people that when they talk about having kids, right? I've got Ellen, you and I, we got our big families. Yeah, what do you have Robin? Nine, eight? Six. No, no, six. Oh, six. Oh, look at me. I'm like, <laughs> Eddie, you well, got we've got one of our new tech moms who's got 10. I'm like, I rarely meet people yeah. with more kids than me. So, but, but that's the thing, like, and, and I'm not telling everyone, go have kids. You have them when you want, but you will never feel ready to have kids. You will never feel ready to, to dive into this scary new job. Um, the other thing I love that you talked about so much was, was being patient and persistent and, and not comparing your timeline to other people. And that's something that we see as well, because we've got, you know, so some of our tech moms who, who get right out there and they get this job and, and it's inspiring and wonderful and we're so happy. But then if someone else are like, well, I must not be good enough. I must not belong right? Mm -hmm. It's not for me. If I didn't, if I wasn't able to get that job really quickly, right out of the gate, the way my right. other tech mom did, then that right. means that she belongs here and I don't. Well, I, that's such an important piece to this because I always have some all-stars, right? Like, so they join my program and then like, it's weeks, it's like, it's just a couple of weeks and they get hired. And then sometimes they get hired for these ridiculous rates, but a lot of that. So here's what I would say to you. Number one, and I understand I'm a big extrovert, big personality. I get it, but I'm married to an introvert and that's not a thing. Being an introvert or extrovert does not mean you're better or worse at this about what I'm about to tell you. And, and what I think the reason people get hired to really focus on this is communicating your value. So it's not just doing the skills. Like sometimes we get into that, to that hole. And this is very common that we're like, we're working on the project. We're working on it. We're working on it. And you've got to remember like, what are the skills? How do I communicate? Come out of that. And I know you're great at this, Robin, but helping people communicate their value of the Current. So the way I look at it is like leverage your previous experience, whatever it is, plus your new skills equals I'm ready to get hired. That's your story. So really focusing on that and working on communicating that value that can accelerate that timeline and your ability to really reach out to people and tell them and just reach out to people that you, that, you know, at first, um, you know, your neighbors, your a friend from high school that you haven't talked to, but they're in tech, like they'll, they'll help you out you're like, oh, we went to the same school, let alone your colleges, which I know you guys are great at too. Like your college network is great. I love my husband's friends. That's another way. Now I have way more tech friends than he does, which it really bothers me when people are like, oh, is your husband in tech? No, just me. I'm really loud about that. <laughs> but, but you know what? If your husband has technology friends and or, or friends in tech, and keep in mind, they don't even have to be in tech. Maybe they're in HR, they're in marketing, or they're just working a company that you like. Try not to be so rigid with who who the criteria that you can ask for, if you can, they can hire you. Try to be open to that conversation. Here's what I found, Robin, and tell me this, if this isn't true for you. When my students reach out to people for help, people are so generous with their time. When you say to someone, I'd like to learn about what you did, and or at the company you work for, will you talk to me about that? Will you help me? I'm a mom trying to break into tech. Oh my gosh, the, it's amazing. I just want to say thank you to the people who are so generous. You're, we're afraid to reach out to them. And yet that's the pathway. Um, is that, have you seen that true for you too? 100%. Absolutely. And, and that's one of the, one of the things that we talk about a little bit is asking people for help in a way that they can give it right. Like yeah. not everybody who's just like a random person at a company can help you get a job. Right. But they can totally. help you get information. They can share ideas. They can give you advice and, and maybe they can connect you with someone who can help you get the job. And so totally. being, being open, like, like asking people for the kind of help that they can give yeah. is, is one of the ways that you can really have success. But I love, I love this, uh, where you're talking about the different types of people that you can talk to. I, I talk all the time that like, whenever I'm at a soccer game, which I'm at a hundred thousand soccer games, I have six kids. Right. But like, yeah. I know the jobs of every parent of, every, <laughs> cause I talk about jobs. That's like, instead yeah. of saying, Oh, tell me about your kids or tell me where you went on vacation. I'm like, what do yeah. you do? Tell me about your company and things like that. So yeah. there are places, even, even if we're not working currently, even if I think I don't have a professional network. Well, most people have jobs right? If we don't have one that's paid right now, there, everybody around us probably does. So when we're at church, mm -hmm. when we're at the PTA meeting, when we're at the soccer game, that's an opportunity for us to get to know more people and build that network. I love it. I think that's such a great message. And yeah, I mean, I can't even tell you how many great contacts I met on the, on the sports fields of my children's sports. It's, it's too many to name. I'll tell you one more story and, and I'm happy to take a question if anyone has it, but one more story about one of my students who she's now a mentor in the program, a super successful teacher to UX designer. 
And she um, went to a meetup. She like listened to me and did it. And she was scared by the way. And she met someone that she, and she was like very new, but she did this thing where she took him on her journey and she, um, you know, she used, he was a mentor. She was, did all these things. And, and she even asked him for a job and it wasn't, there wasn't one available at the time. And so she got hired with like a freelance project. And then she was like pedaled to the metal. She starts interviewing and she tells this guy, she had like five or six interviews. I mean, she was ready to go. She was a teacher. You know, the school year is going to start. She wanted to work before the school year starts. Love my teachers. You guys are so sweet. So you, she, this, and this man, like seeing that she was this hot commodity who she had, they had had developed this relationship from a meetup. And then, and then she, um, you know, was a working, a paid UX designer. And then she was going to get hired by one of these companies. He go, went ahead and snatched her up and hired her. Yeah. And, and she didn't have the skills when she met him. So, you know, that is the power of it is that if you let people on your journey, you never know. You just never know. Yeah. I love it. I have a question. Well, oh yeah, go ahead. So a lot of times I, you know, um, I see jobs posted, you know, with our, uh, within our tech moms group and one LinkedIn or indeed, and how do we get past those, those bots that are just looking for the specific words that will pass your, you know, move your resume on so that people actually look at it, and, you know, and, and I, I understand the importance of networking and I'm like, okay, I've got to go find some meetups and the silicone sl slopes, I can't even talk, things um, that I need to go network and talk to the people I know, but when the companies are somewhere else and we're applying online, how do we get past those things? Especially as a new tech person, I don't can't say I've got coding skills and this skill and this skill. I have mom skills and I have life skills. So, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard this. Yeah, definitely. This is a great question. I appreciate it. Um, actually, it's not a great question. Actually, I'm going to tell you to ask a better question. <laughs> so I want to say thank you for asking that question. And here's why I want you to ask a different question. So the question this is very common. It's like, well, how do I get past the bots? Who cares? That's irrelevant. That's not important. You will develop that as you learn. Like if you're just starting out, you will develop that and it will be authentic and true to you and your story. And so whether you have, you know, uh, React or JavaScript on your, those are just those are just kind of nuances. And instead, it's not how do I apply for a job? Because I another thing I didn't get into is I used to do the Indeed desk scroll. While I was after I would code, I'd look through all these, I call it the Indeed desk scroll. I'd look through all these job postings. I'm not qualified for this, or it can get you negative. I can't possibly do this. Okay, but that's not going to help you. And job postings, by the way, are are not those are going to um they can tend to put people in a negative position because you think you need to know every skill on there. And if you're applying to jobs or you know every single skill, that is not gonna be a great job for your growth trajectory. So I talk all about this. I talk about some podcasts. The way that I tell my students is just find one job that you really love and that seems special, important to you. And if you say, well, Ellen, I love this job, but I don't have those skills. Well, there is a point, like you heard me say, do two projects, leverage your previous experience plus two new jobs. Plus, plus two new projects, plus your experience. So you need to do your, you need to scale up to a certain point. But in terms of the strategy, what I recommend is you look at one job posting that you really love, and then you find that company, and then you reach out to five people at that company at LinkedIn. And you might say, well, Ellen, well, which people? Well, uh, this is something that, you know, it, it becomes nuanced. You're trying to solve this problem. Okay, who are the five best people that I can reach out to? Maybe one is a, a woman in tech. Maybe one is someone you went to college with. Maybe someone is the person who can do the hiring. And you reach out to them on LinkedIn and you ask them about the culture of their company. And this is a whole, I mean, this is a whole thing. Like you just asked a question. And what I'm trying to tell you is you're going to spend weeks and months figuring that out. But if you look through job postings, instead of reaching out to people and authentically connecting, that's where you're going to be in that Indeed desk. No offense to Indeed, I would just scroll through them. That's why I call it that. And so you don't want to, I always say limit your job search time to 25 minutes. That's all you're allowed to do. The rest of your time should be focused on building your new skills and building your community. It's really one job is really just, uh, it just an opportunity for you to network with more people. And I see I have one, I could probably take one more question, Robin, and then I, then I need to run. Um, she says, Ellen, I love your podcast. Thanks for empowering women. My favorite thing you said today was getting the perfect job isn't the goal. Breaking it, breaking in is the goal. Yeah, I'm working on my first tech job right now and loving it, not loving it. You help me feel that I've done the hardest part. I can focus on trajectory moving something forward. So the thing is, Bethany, if you are in a job that you don't love, um, that's 
And I like, first, I'm so sorry, I'm giving you a hug. That's information. And so that's why I have a free download, yourtechie.com slash dream job. Fill out your dream job description. You probably just didn't have all the information that you needed. Now you have great information to move forward and leverage it. So don't stop, keep going. This is just an iterative process. And I like to say, you might not get your dream job, you might not get your dream job on the next one, but if you're taking steps towards your dream job, you're in the right trajectory and progress is going to feel amazing. And congratulations on breaking the tech. I love it so much. We, we're up against our time. Thank you so much, everybody. This has been fantastic. Um, we will catch you all again next time on our next Better Way Thursday. And thanks for joining us.